Hello and welcome to Chemistry Sensei. This is Shane speaking. Today we will be going through 2016 Sec 3 CHIJ St. Joseph Convent SA1 Paper 1 Part 2. Before we begin, it will be good that you try these questions by yourself. These questions can be found in the link provided down in the description box. If not, let us begin. For question 16, the scale below shows the color of M crystal purple indicator in solutions of different pH. In which reaction would the resulting mixture turn the M crystal purple indicator violet? So, so the violet color can be found somewhere around pH 8 and above in this region. So in order for us to generate a high pH, we need to make the resulting solution basic. Basic solution. So in order for us to have a basic solution, we need to have we need to have a strong base. Alright. Okay. So straight away we can have barium oxide because oxides are bases. Okay, can also have aluminium oxide. Option C is incorrect because ammonium nitrate is not a base. Similarly for option D we have phosphorus oxide, which is also a base. However, option B and option D cannot be the answer. The reason being, only barium oxide is soluble in water, as can be seen from the solubility table over here. Right? Only barium oxide is soluble. Aluminium oxide and phosphorus oxide are insoluble in water, and because of that, they are unable to generate hydroxide ion when they dissolve in water. Hence, the correct answer is option A for question 16. Okay, for question 17. Which of the following solutions can be used to distinguish between sodium hydroxide solution and aqueous ammonia? These two compounds are used for qualitative analysis of cations okay which so cations are species with the positive sign so you have your aluminium 3 plus calcium 2 plus so on and so forth so for zinc we have zinc we have iron 2 iron 3 and aluminium okay for zinc we have white precipitate soluble in excess when reacting with sodium hydroxide okay similarly when reacting with aqueous ammonia we have white precipitate soluble in excess so zinc sulfate can't tell the difference between sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia. Similarly for iron 2, iron 2 produces grey-green precipitate insoluble in excess in NaOH. When in aqueous ammonia, it also produces grey-green precipitate and is also insoluble in excess. So iron 2 cannot be the answer. How about for iron 3? Iron 3 produces a reddish brown precipitate insoluble in excess, sodium hydroxide. Similarly, in aqueous ammonia, iron 3 also produces a reddish brown precipitate which is insoluble in excess. Okay. The only answer left is option D. When we use aluminum, right precipitate which is soluble in excess, a color solution is produced. However, in aqueous ammonia, white precipitate is produced but it is insoluble in excess. All right? So there is a difference. For question 18, when excess nitric acid was added into a mixture of two solids, a colorless gas was evolved. So we have acid. So there are only three reactions that we have learned for acid. Acid plus metal to give salt and hydrogen gas. Second one is acid plus carbonate to give salt, carbon dioxide, and water. Lastly, acid plus alkali to give salt and water. Out of these three reactions, only equation 1 and equation 2 produce gas. Right? We have the hydrogen gas and the carbon dioxide gas. Reaction 3 does not produce any gas. So we cannot have a alkali or a base present. Immediately, 
option B is incorrect because there is a side here. Similarly, option D is also incorrect. For option A, we do not have any metal or carbonate. Option A is also incorrect. But in option C, we have a carbonate. So the correct answer is option C for question 18. Question 19. In an attempt to prepare magnesium sulfate, a student added excess sulfuric acid to magnesium. So when excess sulfuric acid is used, this ensures that all the magnesium has been reacted away. Okay. Option A, a colorless odorless gas is evolved. So they are talking about the production of hydrogen gas. But this option is true regardless if we are adding excess or not. So option A cannot be the answer. Option B, all sulfuric acid would be completely reacted. This is again not true because we are adding excess sulfuric acid. There would be some sulfuric acid left unreacted. How about option C? The mixture has to be filtered to remove unwanted magnesium. Again, this is not correct because all of the magnesium has been reacted by the excess sulfuric acid. So the correct answer is option D, where sulfuric acid would not be completely removed. Question 20. The relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24. This means that all of the magnesiums are two times heavier than one twelfth of a carbon twelfth atom. Alright, let's take a look at this phrasing. So we have a carbon 12. So if we use 1 12 of it, so we multiply 1 12, we will get 1. In the option A, all atoms of magnesium are 2 times 1. So we have 2 times 1. Because we have established that this part here is equals to 1. Option A is saying the resulting mass of magnesium is 2, which is incorrect. Similarly, option C is also wrong based on this phrasing alone. Alright, answer option B where all the atoms of magnesium are 24 times or option D the average mass of a magnesium atom is 24 times. The correct answer is option D. The reason is due to the presence of isotopes. So we can have a 23 magnesium, 24 magnesium, 25 magnesium, so on and so forth. Okay, so isotopes, they have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. And because of that, their mass number will differ. And the relative atomic mass accounts for the difference in their mass number. And 24 is the average. Question 21. One of the minerals that make up the jade gemstone is jadeite, which can be represented by the formula NaAlSi2OX. The percentage by mass of oxygen in jadeite is 47.5%. Why is the value of X? We have the mass of oxygen over the total mass multiplied by 100% we have 47.5% this is the percentage mass of oxygen in the jadeite okay so we have the mass of oxygen is 16 and we have x number of oxygen so it's 16 x For sodium, we have one sodium, which is 23, plus one aluminium, which is 27, plus two silicon, which is 28, and lastly, oxygen, we have again 16x. And multiplied by 100%, we have 47.5%. Right. So
so we will have 16x over 106 plus 16x which is equals to 47.5 over 100. This can be simplified to 100 over 47.5 times 16 times 16x which is equals to 106 plus 16x alright which can be further simplified to 640 over 19x minus 16x is equals to 106 and the final answer is 5.994 which can be rounded up to 6 so the correct answer is option D for question 21 question 22 what mass of water will have the same number of hydrogen atoms as 8.5 grams of ammonia gas so ammonia is NH3 the molecular mass of ammonia is equals to 14 plus 3 times 1 because the atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 and the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 okay the total would be 17 all right so using the triangle formula where where the mass is equals to molecular mass multiplied by the number of atoms or the number of species all right over here we can find the number of species by by dividing mass by molecular mass all right the mass of ammonia gas is 8.5 the molecular mass of ammonia gas is 17 all right and that would give us 0 0.5 by doing mole ratio in one ammonia gas we have three hydrogen so if we have 0 0.5 mole of ammonia gas we would have three times 0 0.5 hydrogen and that is equals to 1.5 okay we have 1.5 moles of hydrogen all right the question asks what mass of water would have the same number of hydrogen atoms so we have 1.5 moles of hydrogen atoms the mass of water is equals to the molecular mass of water multiplied by the number of moles the molecular mass of water is equals to 16 plus Two. All right. The reason being, we have two hydrogen, which is two times one, and one oxygen, which is sixteen. Okay. Times the amount of moles, which is one point five. Of, by pressing into calculator, we would get the answer twenty seven grams. And the answer for question twenty two is option D. Okay. Question 23. Elemental bromine is a red-brown liquid at room temperature, corrosive, and toxic. The density of liquid bromine is, at 20 degrees Celsius, is 3.1 gram per cm cube. How many moles are present in 0.024 dm cube of liquid bromine? First, we need to know the liquid, the unit conversion of from dm cube to cm cube. 1 dm cube is equals to 1000 cm cube. So when we have 0 0.024 dm cube of liquid bromine, we would have 24 cm cube of liquid bromine. So from the density, we know that 1 cm cube 
gives us 3.1 grams of liquid bromine as shown over here. So when we have 24 cm cube of bromine which we have calculated over here 3.1 times 24 which gives us 74.4 grams. The question asks how many moles are present in 0.024 dm cube of liquid bromine by using the triangle which we have discussed earlier in question 22 we know that mass is equals to the molecular mass multiplied by the amount of moles so when we have 74.4 grams of bromine and we know that the molecular mass of bromine is 80 times 2 Reason being, bromine exists as a diatomic molecule and each bromine has an atomic mass of 80. Okay. Solving for N, we have the answer. We have the answer 0 0.645 mole. So the answer is option C for question 23. Question 24. Ammonia gas can be prepared in the laboratory by reaction of an, of an alkali with a particular salt. Which one of the following statements about this method is incorrect? Option A. Water is a product of the reaction and should be removed with calcium oxide. Okay, let's take a look at, a, at the reaction. We have an alkali, maybe we use NaOH for example reacting with a salt. This is not a regular salt. We cannot react with a random salt. The only salt that we can react with is ammonium salt to generate ammonia. Okay, so we have maybe NH4Cl as an example. Okay, so this reaction will produce NaCl plus NH3 plus H2O. So how did I get this equation? So let's take a look at the individual components of sodium hydroxide. So we have Na plus OH minus over here. For ammonium chloride, we have NH4 plus and Cl minus. So we exchange their partner, okay? So the sodium plus would go with Cl minus, and the NH four plus would go with OH minus. If they do not exchange their partner, then there would be no reaction. So once we exchange their partner, we will get NaCl plus NH four. OH. However, if you have noticed, NH4OH is not the same as NH3 plus H2O. The reason being, ammonium hydroxide is highly unstable. They will decompose to form the more stable ammonia and water. Back to option A. Water is a product. Yes, and should be removed with calcium oxide. Yes, calcium oxide is a drying agent. Option B, unlike the harbor process, this reaction is carried out under atmospheric pressure. Yes, correct. This reaction occurs readily in atmospheric pressure. All right. However, for harbor process, we will need a pressure of about 200 atmospheric pressure for the reaction to take place. Next, option C. A suitable pair of reactants for this reaction is sodium chloride and ammonium hydroxide. So we have the alkali over here, hydroxide. However, for the salt, we are using sodium chloride. This is not an ammonium. This is not an ammonium salt. And because of that, option C is the answer. 
Option D. If any of the reactants are equal solution, the volume of ammonia gas collected is lower due to its high solubility in water. Yes, ammonia gas is soluble in water and because of that, they would dissolve in water, which reduces your U. Right? So the U would decrease. Okay. So option D is correct. Similarly, for option B and A. Question 25. Which one of the following exhaust gases cannot be removed by installing a catalytic converter in a vehicle? Straight away, the correct answer is option A, carbon dioxide. The reason being, the reason is because catalytic converter is used to convert harmful gases like carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, right? Catalytic converter also converts unburnt hydrocarbon such as methane into carbon dioxide. Catalytic converter also removes toxic nitrogen dioxide into nitrogen. Okay, so the correct answer is option A. Question 26. In a factory producing liquefied air, one of the pipes Carrying dry air at minus 80 degrees Celsius comes blocked with a white solid. So this is in a solid state. The white solid is found to be one of the substances in the table below. What is this white solid? Immediately, I know that option B cannot be the answer because there is no water present. Okay, so let's take a look at the rest okay so we have minus 80 degree celsius at negative 57 degree celsius which is over here all right we know that we have already passed the melting point of carbon dioxide that means this this region over here is colder than the melting point which is sometimes known as the freezing point of carbon dioxide. And because of that, carbon dioxide exists as a solid. So carbon dioxide is, exists as a solid at negative 80 degrees Celsius. However, for both argon and nitrogen, we have 189, minus 189 degrees Celsius and minus 110 degrees Celsius. All right, their freezing point is at a much lower temperature than negative 80 degrees celsius and because of that they are still in the liquid state hence correct answer is option c question 27 nitrogen and oxygen react according to the following equation why is the enthalpy change negative all right so the enthalpy change is over here it is negative okay so why is the enthalpy change negative for this reaction in energy is equals to the energy absorbed plus the energy released. Energy released is inherently a negative sign, all right, because energy is being taken away from the system okay so in order for change in energy to be negative the energy release must be more than the energy absorbed all right so the correct answer is option d where the total energy absorbed is less than the total energy released okay question 28 in which of the following reactions is the underlying substance acting as n oxidizing agent okay so oxidizing agent they cause the other species to be oxidized but it itself is reduced okay. so let's take a look at the oxidation state for iodide we have the oxidation state of minus one in its elemental form it has an oxidation state of zero all elements have an oxidation state of zero Similarly, zinc being an element, it has an oxidation state of zero. Okay. Over here, in zinc sulfate, it has an oxidation state of plus two. Reason being, sulfate 
is SO4 2 minus. Alright? To balance the charge, zinc must be 2 plus. Okay? As the oxidation state increases from 0 to plus 2, zinc is being oxidized. Hence, it is not an oxidizing agent. Okay? Similarly, in option A, the oxidation number increases from minus 1 to 0. This suggests that the iodide is being oxidized. Hence, it cannot be the answer. How about option C? Fe2 plus becomes Fe3 plus. As the oxidation number increases from 2 plus to 3 plus, this suggests that iron 2 is being oxidized. Option C cannot be the answer. How about for option D? Copper is 2 plus. Reason being oxygen from group 6, it has a charge of 2 minus. Copper over here being an element, it has an oxidation state of 0. So we can see that the oxidation number decreases from 2 plus to 0. This suggests that copper oxide is being reduced. Hence, it is an oxidizing agent because it causes hydrogen, which has the oxidation state of 0, to be oxidized to H plus. Question 29. What color changes occur when excess sulfur dioxide is passed through aqueous potassium iodide and acidified potassium manganate 7 separately? So potassium iodide is a test for oxidizing agent. Okay, on the other hand, potassium manganate test for reducing agent. Alright, so the correct answer is option D. Because sulfur dioxide is a reducing agent. Okay, sulfur dioxide is a reducing agent because it can form SO3, SO4, so on and so forth. Okay, this is where you have the sulfuric acid H2SO4. Okay. As sulfur dioxide is a reducing agent, it would react with potassium manganate. So we will observe a change of. So we would observe a change from purple to colorless. Last question: The energy profile diagram for the forward reaction between hydrogen and iodine is as shown below. What is the activation energy? Okay, so activation energy is the energy from the start, from the start over here to the highest point. Okay, this is the activation energy for the forward reaction. Okay, so you can imagine a person is over here. He will need this much amount of energy to reach the top of the hill. However, the question is asking for backward reaction. Alright, so instead of starting over here, the person is starting over here. Okay, he will need this much of energy to reach the top of the hill. Okay, and this corresponds to 114 kilojoules. So the correct answer is option C. Okay, thank you for watching up to here. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you soon.